Hi, so I found a way to create high-level atlases uh, using Quixel, Megascans, 3D assets and some baking, so I'm gonna do a tutorial on it. So before we start, you're gonna need a few things. Well, first of all, you're gonna need some uh, 3D assets and there are some great ones from Megascans, you can grab this free one and I'm going to be using the same one for for this tutorial. And uh, you, you're going to need X normal. Well, actually the plugin for Photoshop. So go ahead and download that as well. Just make sure you're choosing your, your the operating system you have. And then we're going to use uh, from the freebie section from flamingpair.com. We actually need just one. It comes in a zip. And then we're gonna use uh, a custom script that I that I wrote, which tiles the geometry across the surface, and it's free. So go and grab that as well. So let's jump into it. Well, I divided this process into three steps. The first one is Maya, which we're gonna use to scatter the geometry and bake the maps. The next one is Photoshop to manipulate and export the maps, and then it's Mixer. So the first one being Maya, we're gonna drag our high poly our models, twigs actually, whatever they are. Oh, we're gonna use the script I told you about and we're gonna create a, a plane. We're gonna put a hundred centimeters which is one meter. And we're gonna use this plane to scatter the geometry on and we're gonna use the same plane to bake the maps too. So I'm going to select all of the twigs and create a mesh network. And I'm just quickly going to group the twigs so my outliner is in a mess. And I'm going to add an ID node and a random node. And you can pretty much cut out your geometry whichever way you want. I am using mask because so I'm more comfortable with it. You can use SP Paint or hand uh, place them. I'm just adjusting the parameters of the mesh network. In the ID I'm choosing random and in the distribute mesh so I can drag my base in and scatter my twigs on it. I'm just putting 280 so I can have more twigs and when I'm happy with a random seed, I'm just, well, I'm going to change my mass network from uh, instance art to geometry. And when that's done, which is soon, I hope. Yeah, I'm going to delete the history from the from this mesh, so it detaches itself from uh, the mesh network, and I'm going to delete the mesh network and the empty group above, so I can keep a clean scene. And now I'm going to separate all of the twigs, and I'm going to use the the objects that are on the edges of the plane to tile them, and I'm going to top view to deselect basically everything that's not on the outside so I can help the script do its job faster and better and then I'm gonna hit tile geo and this is gonna take everything that's coming out of the edges and tile it to the other sides and now I'm gonna make it one object again And once again, delete the history and all that. And I think we're ready to do our first bake after this. So I'm going to go to the range of settings. And I don't have Turtle on, so I'm going to my plugin manager and I'm going to find Turtle and load it. 
and after that I'm going to choose Tarot I'm just deleting what I don't need then go to the Tarot tab choose baking instead of rendering because I want to bake I'm going to choose my base and put it as the target surface and my high poly twigs as the source and now I'm going to pretty much disable uh, what I don't need I'm going back to that I'm keeping it at 512 for now so I can test that everything is going okay I'm choosing albedo as the first as the first map and for this I'm going to clear, create a, a Lambert material And for my texture files, I'm going to drag Galbido and the normal maps that come with the 3D assets, and I'm going to connect the Albedo to the out color of the to the color of the Lambert. Just make sure your diffuse is at one. Alternatively, you can use a surface shader, and make sure you turn your the filtering off on the files. And now I'm going to assign my Lambert to my high poly. And I'm going to just do a, a test bake, just making it bigger so I can see. Make sure Tero is on. And since it's 512, it's only taking like 8 seconds. And this is real time. This is not sped up. And now I'm going to put 4K for the maps. I've actually already baked them because uh, this is a third time recording this so I'm not actually gonna do any baking here I'm just showing you how to do it now I'm just changing the the name of the map I'm leaving the dollar sign E at the end so whichever map I choose from the file format uh, it automatically detects and creates uh, the correct image Otherwise, if you choose PNG and your file extension is, I don't know, TGA, it's going to be a corrupted file. So, yeah, since I, I'm i done with the albedo, I'm just going to do the normals. And now I'm choosing the correct one for myself, which is PNG. I'm choosing normal map and I'm making sure to include bum maps in the normal which means it's gonna bake the normals in uh, well world space and it's gonna take the bum up detail from the normal map as well which is handy and I'm gonna do my normal bake uh, now I think it's time for the displacement and I'm gonna take the displacement map and make it make sure that the the range is zero to one which means black to white and once again I'm going to bake as you see at this stage it's pretty much straightforward And this is my displacement map. Now I'm going to do the ambient occlusion map. And for that, I'm going to that little checkerboard, going, clicking on Maya and choosing the OCC sampler, which is basically the ambient occlusion shader for Turtle. And I'm going to use the same bump map for the detail in the ambient occlusion. And changing, make sure you change every time the name if you don't want to to override the files you baked before. And the ambient occlusion map is ready.
Now I'm going to do the opacity map, uh, which I will need uh, later on in Photoshop and well, in Mixer as well. And make sure that the edge dilation is at zero. We don't want to extend any edges on our mask. We're going to use this mask to cut out everything else. And for that, I'm going to create a surface shader and connect the surface shader to the custom shader and make sure the the color is white so we have a black and white mask as you can see the background color there is black so here is our mask and next we're going to do the roughness, specular and bomb maps. And for that, we're going to create another surface shader. We could use the, the Lambert or the same surface shader, I'm just I'm just creating another one. And I'm going to bring in the roughness, bump, and specular maps into Maya. And firstly, I'm going to connect the roughness to the surface shader and render this out. And we're practically rendering out the color information, so that's why I'm um, choosing off at the filter type and yeah well basically you do one at a time make sure to rename every time uh, yeah we do need the edge dilation this time the only map we don't need the edge dilation for is the opacity mask opacity map and after doing this, you should be having all the maps and we should be ready to jump into Photoshop. I'm just going to choose all the maps and bring them into Photoshop. And as you can see, I do have the 4K bags. <laughs> So yeah, I'm choosing everything, dragging it into Photoshop. And it's going to take a few seconds to load everything. And I'm going to go to the opacity mask. And I'm going to hit Ctrl A to select everything and Ctrl C to copy it. And I'm going to go in every map and mask out the parts that I don't need. Which, is, which come from the edge dilation. And we need the edge dilation because the background color is black and if we try to extend it, it uh, would be, we would have fringing, essentially. So now um, I duplicated the layer and I applied the layer mask and you solidify C. And you can't see it right now, you're gonna see it clearly at uh, the albedo. I'm just going to export it as a JPEG. Maximum quality. And let's do the albedo as well. So same procedure, I'm going to create a layer mask. Copy paste the opacity mask on the layer mask and duplicate, apply and use solidify C. I'm just going to use Ctrl F, which is a shortcut. And what Solidify C does basically is that it extends every edge until it hits another extended edge. So you don't have it transparent or something else as a background. Saving the albedo. And now I'm going to do 
the same for the bomb displacement and pretty much everything else and I'm going to export the opacity mask as well as a JPEG now I'm going to show you the normal because we're going to do something different with the normal in the end it's the same procedure for now duplicate, apply layer mask solidify C And if you think that your normal map looks a bit dull, a bit grey, we're gonna use the normalized normal map from the X normal plugin. And I'm just gonna make sure that our normal map is normalized. Well, it basically doesn't change everything. In case we had a few bad pixels and whatnot. So yeah, it's time to jump into Mixer after we've exported every map. So I'm going to create a new mix. And I'm going to browse for a for a base layer it's just so we can uh, mix our twigs on it and now it's time to import as a custom surface and now we're gonna make sure auto populate is on and we're gonna click on uh, any map just choose albedo and yeah, make sure our populate is on. And Mixer does its job, finds all the maps. And don't worry about the displacement, we're gonna fix that in the next step. And I found point 0.7 does the trick. And I'm gonna say it's two meters because otherwise Mixer is gonna try to tile it and right now it, they don't support uh, tiling the mask which is unfortunate please, please fix <laughs> and I'm just tagging like tags and I need to select a category and I'm gonna say debris and import And now if we go to debris in our library, we're gonna find this Twigs demo I just exported. And you can see all my previous attempts <laughs> at failed videos. And now this is the map. And we're gonna use the opacity mask that we haven't used in the mixer so far to mask this and we're gonna add a mask from an image which is gonna be our opacity map and well here it is now from now on is standard mixer business you can adjust pretty much anything you want and this is pretty much the end of the tutorial. Now I'm going to just play a bit with the settings. I'm going to lower the high frequencies because the normal up is uh, too intense, I guess. But yeah, I think it blends pretty well with the, the other surface. And it's not noticeable, it's not alien to this, so yeah. Well, I hope you found it useful, and if anyone from Quixel is watching, please do fix or add uh, 
the ability to tile the alpha. Because right now, if I want to tile it twice, I'm gonna need to go to Photoshop and tile the alpha and bring it back as as an image. Or make it possible to import as a custom atlas. I don't know if it's if it's not that hard. So right now you can export it as maps. You can save it uh, in your library as a new material. And yep. So I hope you found it useful. If you have any feedback, please do say so. If you have a way of making things better, if I'm doing anything wrong, whatever it is, I'll I really appreciate it. So anyway, thanks for watching.